what is Austrian economics in this beautiful whirlwind picture that you painted? Okay, Austrian economics grew out of the out of the rebellion against the classical school. So you had three intellects who mainly led the growth of the neoclassical school back in the 1870s. It was William Jevons from England, uh, Menger, who's from Austria, and Volras from France. And uh, Volras tried to work out a, a set of equations to describe a multi-product a multi uh, product economy where there's numerous producers and numerous consumers. Everybody's both a producer and a consumer. And you try to work out a vector of prices that will give you equilibrium in all markets in instantaneously. And that's his equilibrium orientation. Jevons is also one about equilibrium, but he worked more at the aggregate level. So there's a supply curve and a demand curve, and that's what gave, well, Marshall ultimately codified. Menger was pretty much saying that, well, yes, there might be an equilibrium, but you're going to get disturbed from it all the time. You'll be above or below the equilibrium. And what came out of the Austrian school was an acceptance of that sort of vision that a market should reach equilibrium, but then said, well, you'll get disturbed away from the equilibrium. And it's that's what gives you the vitality of capitalism, because an entrepreneur will see an arbitrage advantage and try to close that gap. And that will give you innovation over time. And Schumpeter went beyond that and saw the role of money and said that entrepreneur, an entrepreneur is somebody with a great idea and no money. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So to become a capitalist, you've got to get money. And therefore, you've got to approach the finance sector to get the money. And the finance sector creates money and also creates a debt for the entrepreneur. And so you get this financial engine turning up as well. Uh, and you will get movements away from equilibrium out of that. You won't necessarily head back towards the equilibrium. So Schumpeter has a, a rich a vision of capitalism in which money plays an essential role, in which you will uh, be disturbed from equilibrium all the time. And that is really, I think, a much closer vision of actual capitalism than anything by even Aust even the, the, you know, the Aust leading Austrians, uh, you know, Hayek, uh, et cetera, et cetera, they... They and certainly Rombard, who I, I find totally like reading a cardboard cutout version of uh, of the wealth of, of of the wealth of nations. It's uh, I find his worth trivial. Um, but Schumpeter was rich, but with the same foundations as the Austrians. But because he talked about the importance of money, that took him away from the Austrian vision, which is very much based on a hard money idea of capitalism. Uh, Schumpeter said you needed the capacity of the financial sector to create money to empower entrepreneurs. And that's a very important vision. So Schumpeter's argument mm. is the deviation from equilibrium, that's where all the fun happens. That's yeah. where all the magic happens. That's the capitalism. magic of capitalism. And like the Austrians, because they focus on the deviation from equilibrium are better than neoclassicals, but they still have this belief in the, you know, you'll reach equilibrium ultimately or you'll head back towards it. Uh, whereas they they don't they don't have an explanation of capitalism that gives you cycles apart from having the wrong rate of interest okay so there's no role for an accumulation of debt over time so what schumpeter gave us was a a vision of the creativity of capitalism being driven by entrepreneurs who are funded by money creation by the finance sector and that's fundamentally the world in which we live 